smile on you, give you peace, and take a liking to you. May the Lord not only love you, but like you. Hey, my, my, my. That he take a liking to us. Mm, mm, mm. Glory to God. You know, the psalmist said in the fifth number of Psalms, hmm, In Psalm number five, beginning with verse one, give ear to my words, O Lord. Hmm. Consider my meditation. Isn't that wonderful that we can ask the Lord to do so? Lord, listen to me. That's what he's saying. Lord, listen to me. Listen to the words that come out of my mouth and listen to the thoughts of my heart, my meditations. Isn't there something? Hearken, verse 2, unto the voice of my cry my king and my God for unto thee will I pray mm, mm, mm. my voice shall bow here in the morning let me pause for the cause I tell folk uh, the only way to serve the Lord is to, to get up and let us our voices be heard in the morning. Uh, all of God's servants get up early in the morning and talk to God. Uh, that's par for the course. That's the staple for the saints. They get up every morning and open their mouths to God and pray. That's a given. That's an automatic. Thy vote, my voice, <clears throat> shall thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning, now I like this part, will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. We know what we're praying when we stop looking out and start looking up. Looking out is, is to be burdened with our environment, our present real-time conditions, and it's frustrating. When we open our mouths to the Father in prayer, we should be looking unto Jesus because we can only go to the Father by him. Amen. For he ever makes intercession for those of us who come to God by him. And it's important to direct our prayer because if we don't direct our prayer to God, we would direct our prayer somewhere else. We'll be directing our prayer in the wrong direction. God is always up. He's always up. We never look down to God. We always look up to him. And the writer in Hebrews says, looking unto Jesus, who authored and perfected faith itself. Amen. He also says in that 12th chapter of Hebrews, looking diligently. In other words, focused in our prayers. Focused in fighting the good fight of faith in our prayers. Looking unto Jesus, looking diligently, lest any man fail or fall away from the grace of God. And because we were looking out and not up, a root of bitterness will spring up and trouble us. We'll be upset about how we feel. We'll be upset about what the environment dictates. 
and a root of bitterness will spring up and trouble us and thereby many be defiled. We don't want to defile folks with our prayerlessness, lack of focus, discipline focus, discipline focus. That's why prayer is a discipline. Would you say that with me? Prayer is a discipline. That's what prayer is. Now, if, if we're all kind of ways, we, if we won't pray. We may holler help, but we won't give due diligence to talking to the Father. And the writer in Hebrews chapter 11 say, those of us who come to him must believe. Uh -huh. It didn't say must bleed. It said must believe. Don't wait until we bleed to believe. We must believe that he is, present tense. Not was, shall be, although that's correct, but is and that he is a rewarder. You know, when we know that he pays wages, he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, what we do, we go with expectation. I get a paycheck. I have something coming. We don't go to the Lord without expectation. Say, well, he can do it if he wants to. No, 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 no. He's going to do it because he has to. Because he said he would. And the scriptures cannot be broken. If he said it, he'll bring it to pass. He hastens his word to perform it. Uh huh. He's good for whatever he says. Woo, glory to God. This is why we draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Ooh, excuse me. Uh oh. A full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled. See, if you're like me, most of the time we go to him. We have issues. We have issues. Like the brother said, it's few. You see, standing in the need of prayer. So we draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith to have our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience or a conscience that accuses us. To have our conscience purged from whatever it is that we thought, said, or did that was not right. The blood of Christ takes care of it. Now, we got to read it, believe it, and receive it uh, before we can go on and diligently seek him Amen. to get that paycheck. He doesn't pay anybody that don't pray. And we only get paid to the extent that we do pray. Mm -hmm. And his payment is not only uh, in things you can see, like monetary terms, but his uh, payment is in kind. In kind. In kind. In other words, you can have the cash. Give me the kind. Because having money means you got to go and spend it. And it takes time. But if he give it to us in kind, it eliminates time. We got it. It's just like, so then faith cometh and that word, a comet, is italicized, which means it's a verb. It takes time to come. It's inserted by the, the one who translated, but I take that word out. I take that word cometh out of Romans 10, 17. So faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That word cometh, I lay it to the side. I'm not going to take it out of the page. I'm just going to lay it to the side in my mind. So then faith by hearing. Faith doesn't have to come from anywhere when we hear. Amen. When we hear, faith is there, right Amen. there. What says that the word is nigh thee, even in your mouth and in your heart, that is the word of faith, which we preach, that when you hear it, it's there already. Amen. Faith is in our mouth, so we ought to open our mouth wide and direct our prayer to God. Oh, glory, hallelujah. In the morning. In the morning. In the morning first conversation we ought to have in the morning is with God, with our Father. Not with the coffee pot, mm-hmm, or anybody else. 
if somebody talked to you before you talked to God, just say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to prayer. Uh-huh. We don't have anything to talk about until we pray. We got to, look, if you're going to work in a factory like I did many, many years ago, they give you a time card. And your time doesn't count until you punch in. It doesn't count until you punch in. <laughs> Prayer is punch in time. Uh, now, if you're late, you're going to get docked. You're going to get docked every time you're late. The corporation don't play. They only pay for time served. Being on the clock. When I talk to people, I very seldom call people anyway, but when I do call people, I know they work particular jobs. I say, are you on the clock? Are you on the clock? I don't want to uh, take you away from your responsibility because you get paid for what you do. And God pays us. He pays wages for seeking him diligently. Glory. My, I open the scriptures and I Sometimes I don't know what to pray. I, I'm not inspired. So I open up the word and I start reading. Oh, that's where I start, right there. Then I flip some more. I say, oh, there. And then pretty soon uh, the anointing hit my spirit, you know. You know the word anoint means to rub or massage. Uh huh. Anybody want to go get a massage? Go pray. Go pray and he'll massage our spirit. Uh -huh. He'll heat us up, yeah, 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 yeah. and we'll be like an Elijah. It's a, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. We get heated up. You, some people think I have a cold every time I pray. No, I'm blowing my nose because when I pray, everything that don't belong there come out. That's why I try to use the lavatory before I pray, so because I know when I start praying, it's going to come out at the top and the bottom. When we pray, we ought to pray until our spirits are heated up, our minds are illuminated, our bodies are regulated, and regulated. All the abnormalities have to stand at attention and say, yes, sir, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I can't hang around with this. I can't hang around with this. Sometimes some of us have to go to the, to the uh, sauna and, and sweat it out. But we should sweat it out in prayer. Okay. Look, go with me to uh, First Timothy. Hey, glory, hallelujah. First Timothy chapter 6. Now, now that we have prayed, Mm hmm That opens us up. First Timothy chapter six. Mm-hmm. Woo. Verse twelve, you're familiar with it, yes. Chapter Chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. What is the fight of faith all about? It's about enjoying real time eternal life. That's what the fight of faith is about. When we are praying, what we're doing, we're praying to the point that much is availed in our prayer. Amen. And one of the prevailing things that we want to experience is eternal life in real time. Amen. See, eternal life is the quality of God's life that lasts forever. But in order to experience it real time in our spirit, in our minds, in our emotions, in our bodies is to fight the good fight of faith and faith by hearing and hearing by the word of God so 
if you're dry and you're not inspired and uh, uh, things are going on and you're reeling and rocking, and you know you got to pray and you got to get through all that, open up the word. So then faith by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Go to the Psalms. Go to Ephesians. Go to Philippians. Go to Colossians. Just, just, just go and start reading. Start reading. And all of a sudden, the word will catch us and stimulate faith and confidence and assurance. And then pretty soon, it's blast off. Blast off. Phase one, overcome gravity, the pull of this world. Break through the clouds, the clouds of despair. Because it may be raining, raining down here. The wind may be blowing and it may be cold and everything, but as soon as you break through the clouds, there's a sun right there. There's a sun right there. Mm -hmm. There's a sun right there. The clouds may be thick. It may be turbulence. But as soon as you break through, those of you that fly a lot, you know, say, wow, I didn't know the sun was shining. And then you're in steady elevation. <clears throat> and the, the further you got to go, <clears throat> the higher you have to fly. Let me say that again. The further we have to go, the higher we need to fly. If you're going from Little Rock to Dallas, you, 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 you might get, you might get uh, 19,000 uh, feet. You might get 19,000 feet. Depends on the pilot, how they want to, you know, do it. But if you're going to, to uh, 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 Johannesburg in South Africa, when you take off from the international airport, you'll be climbing and climbing and climbing and climbing. You'll hit that 20,000, that 30,000, that 39,000, that 40,000 feet above sea level. Glory to God. Where everything down there looks small. You can see three and four cities at the same time. You can do this out the window. You can put your finger like that and bring a city right in between your thumb and your finger. Because we are now seated with him in the heavenlies in our cognition. Glory to God. That's what prayer is about. It's to seek those things which are above. To set your affections on things above. Uh-huh. And not things on the earth. And the higher the smaller things on earth look smaller our problems are good God almighty that's why the enemy have to wait outside when you're praying he can't handle high flying prayer but we have to really 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 fight you got to fight to get out the bed because these, those, these carnal minds of ours will calculate what time it takes to get up and get showered and dressed and get the prayer. It will calculate wrong every day. You got to fight to get out the bed. You got to fight to uh, uh, somebody else is not going to prayer uh, 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 fixing coffee. And that aroma stimulating your membrane. Preempting the stimulation of the Holy Ghost. Oh, glory to God. Don't, don't get caught up with false stimuli. Don't get caught up with false stimuli. Don't let anything stimulate us before the Holy Ghost does. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Jude, Jude, yeah, Jude, Jude. Yeah, that's where it is. In Jude. Yeah, there you go. Verse 20. They only have one chapter there. Jude, verse 20. <laughs> but ye, beloved, building up yourselves, wow, on your most holy faith, Praying in the Holy Ghost. That is a combination, that is a recipe for total success. A recipe for total success. You don't have to worry about evangelist uh, Huck and Hull from Philly York to come in and stimulate you. You can go to prayer and build yourself up. Fighting the good fight of faith and building yourself up on your most holy faith. Your most holy faith. Your most holy faith. How? In the Holy Ghost praying. And in order to pray in the Holy Ghost, number one, you got to be inspired to pray, period. <laughs> you got to pray, period. And if we're not stimulated to pray, get stimulated by going to the Word. And the Word of God that will have free course, and the Word of God that's quick and powerful, the Word of God that, uh, that have already germinated us and, and, and seeded us, the Word of God will stimulate us to pray. And then when the anointing come or massages our spirit, it will heat us up. Ooh -wee. And then up out of your spirit will fill the heart, get to the mind, renew and turn the light on in the mind. That's called renewing of the mind. The mind is becoming spiritual. The life and the peace is setting in. Ooh -wee. The, the storm is being calm. Peace, be still. Problem, you ain't all you think you are. Building up yourselves. Building up yourselves. Building up yourselves. On your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. My God. Mm -mm -mm. One more scripture. First Peter. First Peter chapter 4. First Peter chapter 4. Hallelujah. Glory. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. First Peter chapter four, pull in that verse seven. Uh huh. Let's read that together, like we are all evangelists and we're in the soccer stadium and we're preaching. We're the main speaker. First Peter four, verse seven. Let's all read that verse together. And it says, "But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober." And watch unto prayer. It's not coming, it's here. So be sober. And James said, vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He says, you stand. You, you steadfastly resist in the faith. Fight in a good fight of faith. And there it is. Be sober. Sober minded. Not flippant. Not a cocoa puff. Be sober. And watch unto prayer. Watch unto prayer. Paul said pray with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Watching thereunto with what? All perseverance. In other words, fight the good fight of faith in prayer until you break through. Until you break through. Until you break through. You keep on praying. Don't stop no matter what, no matter who. But open your mouth. And exert some energy. Jesus Christ. Ooh wee. And, and see, the devil can't stop you. Then, even if, even if, even if you you can't wrap your mind around the issues, 
your spirit can pray in another language that your understanding is unfruitful. And even when you're speaking in another language that your understanding is unfruitful, the Holy Ghost himself will you with grace. Ooh, wait. good with your understanding. You're doing good with your tongue. Yes, but the Holy God, he see that and he wrote, he, he met with a and brought to the throne. Keep up. Keep up. 